you may find some people in situations in your life kind of leave your sphere this year as new come in because you're getting ready for a brand new beginning and what what is no longer appropriate for your soul's path sort of passes away. Mm -hmm. A bunch of opportunities to serve others compassionately on a spiritual leadership opportunity this share. And compassion for those less fortunate and asking them that brings great reward to the mind. Okay, can you tell us your yeah, um, I'm, a, I'm a three. Last year I was an eight, and this year I'm a nine. Mm. Well, very similar to <laughs> but a three. A three year overall <laughs> life purpose is creativity and expression. Yeah. The, thr the uh, eight of last year again, balancing the material, and the ambitious, the structure, but also having a, an ability to set goals and achieve them in the manifest world. And that now you're, you're looking for a deeper understanding of, your, of all things that you release the old and get ready for a brand new nine year cycle that will take you past the year 2000. If you, if you are a three, a lot of times in a, in a nine personal year for a person who's a three birth force or destiny, the artwork that they're doing, since you are an artist, you might even be able to do better work. Because Nine is an artistic number also. Three, actually, mm -hmm. three sixes and nine, but especially the three. The three can operate very well with the nine. Good point. Actually, I've been real stuck with it. With my insides just absolutely needing to create, but with, a, but just with my feet in the lapis over last year. <coughs> last year. You, you know, the, the three and eight don't work well together. And the, the, eight, the eight's very demanding. And the three doesn't want any, any demands on it. You may find that that'll break up this year, that feeling of sobbiness and being stuck. I almost, I almost, I almost feel that. Okay. Can you say your first name and your name today? Uh, Betty, uh, March 13th. I feel like with you that you have the third eye center, the brow chakra is quite open, and that you do see. You have the gift of the inner eye, which should come out your art should have a visionary count. Do you do visionary art, that translating those things you see? Um, I do a lot of meditating, and I come up with my art very often through meditation. But yeah. Yeah. Do do the, the things to do, the universal caring for others, the compassion and empathy of the nine, maybe those themes will come up mm -hmm. also in your art and your music. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mm. My first course is seven, and last year was six, and this year seven. You you got a lot of soul searching coming in, most definitely, as we'll go seven. It's, it's sort of forcing you to really take a look at the, the deeper mysteries of life. It's, you know, but it won't be bad unless you just refuse to not look, you know. If you do look and, and investigate, it should be a very good year. Seven can be a very good year if you use it to investigate the tool that's meant to do. But if you, if you don't, it could, you could have some problems. As a seven, I've had that 10 years because I'm seven birth force. And I think it's, for many people who aren't seven, it might be your that would take you into a lot of introspective, inner research, uh, psychological and spiritual development. If seven is your birth force, which it is, I think it can also take you out to fulfill your destiny because it's like uh, Barbara, Barbara's here. You know, so she's got a one, and that's what she was born under. I think it could really help you accomplish your spiritual, um, psychological, philosophical bent and purpose in this life. And I think it should be an excellent year for you, taking you really into uh, who and what you were intended to be in this life. So just, can you say your first name and the month and day? Joan, October 15th. I think it's a year where you might have been um, kind of timidly exploring some areas, I think you come much more out in confidence now in who and what you want to be and are. We have somebody at the door. I think it's a great year for you. And, and next by next year, if you can see it really translated into having man being to really manifest some important goals and financial success under the eight. This is a tremendous year of study and accomplishment. That's good to hear because I did very yeah. Uh, just, just going in all different directions but not, not really concentrating on anything. I'm confused as to where I'm going. I really felt that lately. Well, it with that seven, though, you, you should be able to focus your life if you allow yourself to. Yeah. The six was dealing with family. Sometimes 
with the member sick, the family situation, domestic situation, it can be a lot of turmoil and distraction. But this year, you should be able to focus better with that seven. Being a seven birth force, too, you, you shouldn't have a lot of trouble with that this year. Okay, Sharon. Um, my birth force is at three, and this year is one last one day. The same as in person, and Betty, the same identical. <laughs> and I noticed that you had partly the same as Suzanne's, it's like synchronistically you're sitting together. Your birth force is a three, last year was an eight, and this is a nine. So a lot of the things, the creativity being part of your destiny, multiple talent. Uh, in this lifetime. The eight last year emphasizing a lot of material lessons having to do with money, finances, goals, job, purpose, what you're you know, going to do with your life. And I know some of that's true. And this year's a real finishing up of all the things over the last nine year cycle, but deepening spiritual understanding under nine gives you especially when you turn your attention towards uh, universal principles and help, helping humanity as a whole, it really is a power to your point of did you want to say your month and day and your name yeah. and your month and day? Yeah, I'm the 24th. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, I just feel intuitively a lot of, um, somewhere there's a two in there, too, a lot of par possible partnership energy, uh, enjoyment of the beautiful things of life, the arts, the, the love, affection and energy, possibly in, in a partnership with you. Know where that comes from? But I maybe, either. <laughs> maybe, maybe somebody of a, of a nine bent, somebody up, who has broader, someone else too who has a broader caring for humanity as a whole and more spiritual bent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, my fourth is nine. Last year was a two. Last year, last year you really finished up a lot, let go of a lot, completed a lot. Oh, oh your life worth is nine. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. So your, your, this whole lifetime has to do with um, understanding, we might have friends with many, many walks because nine is the number that incorporates all the others. You can have rich friends, poor friends, really intellectual friends, very simple, you know, country friends. You can walk among many and understand them as a nine because you've walked the paths before. And last year was a Two, the partnerships of all kinds were acting. This year, three is creativity and expression, much more playful probably than last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is probably be a lot better year for you this year. The three year, threes and nines work very well together. So it should be, you should have a sense of creativity, a sense of being able to put things together a little bit better than maybe you did last year. But with the three, sometimes there might be a sense of uh, uh, being happy in certain areas. In your life. Maybe some. Uh, from, from the past or some people you know now or something. But if you can recognize that for what it is and let your creativity come out anyway, it'll be a great year for it. You're going to be there. You're going to be Especially Virginia Beach under three and made all kinds of new friends. Uh, well, last year I had the child I was told I wouldn't have, and she's a three. And my partner's oh. a seven, two, and three. Mm. Mm. So there's a 50 and a three years of both of us. Oh, we didn't do your, okay, your aura. Okay. So your first name is Tina. I feel like in the past life experience, take it metaphorically if you will, that you've done a lot of, you've been in a, um, like a temple or a spiritual order where you, you could, you've learned to be alone to contemplate, spend time uh, by yourself and with yourself, drawing. You need some time alone to recharge your battery. This is a lifetime where you learn much more about relationships. About, and it's really, and you, you're with, I would say your partner has been with you before in such a temple or such an order, and you've been like partners in time kind of thing. And uh, and so is the child that's come back. This is not by chance, <laughs> this kind of thing. Um, I think that the child's going to bring a great deal of um, that vitality, that pretty, that lot of sparkle in your life at this point. Alex, if you ever retreat too much, you'll be re energized through <laughs> this little soul. You, know, okay. you might have a feeling that you've done this before, also, being a nine. A lot of times, when you're a nine birth board, you come back to repeat, which is something that you didn't complete in the past. 
there might be a feeling for you that, gee, there's something familiar about what's going on. Here. What's your child's first name? Alicia. And her birth? Month of day or? Oh, oh her, um, February 18th. Be, if two, you and your partner might be trying to go a little more serious to retreat, she's going to have that sort of vivacity you know, to bring you out with a year to learn from her about, about expressing the truth. So. Okay. Night four, seven. Past year nine. This year one. Mm. New beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things you were working on last year should come to fruition this oh, year. Oh, thank you. <laughs> your book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll probably do it your way. You know, you're going to, your way, it's an innovative, creative, and, and uh, um, an emphasis on self, your needs, your goals out of that project. Can you say your first name when you want to name? Linda, October 25th. There has to be a lot of um, blue and water, air, and some form of travel around this whole issue. And uh, person or people that you've been meant to meet that come come to you through the interaction related to this book and the big step you're going to take brings you into reunion with friends of many long, long ago. Very much you. Want to tell us all your when with, with a seven path, which is what John has too, the, the the kind of work you're doing is perfect for the seven. And the, what is a dream research? Yes. And under it, yeah. Very much right. It's like last year you kind of completed and tied up a lot of understanding that you've been working to accumulate and pull together for a long time, and then now it's put it out. Okay. Your first name is, or it tells your birth and all that sort of thing. I was in my 25th, and I We should be able to put some things uh, together that you've been working on for 20 years. Uh, <coughs> something spiritual and something physical and put it in a concrete form this year. Make it work. You should be able to do that. What was last year? Oh, last year was your third. Last year. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the that's okay. thing. The creativity that you got from last year to bring forward to this year. And you, know, you put it together with something you've been working on. Make it work. Make things work on a form. One four is you can make that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I have to be often as a family because I don't, I don't identify with it for, you know, it's just it's, 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 um, so so that. Probably five you would relate to, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I find out my own, you know, the minute that I, if I do the calculation in my name, that's, okay, that would be your best thing. Your best thing is that the five. I think the one that's that that is the one way that I can relate to. Mm. What's your birth force? Just say. Uh, five. The, your birth date is five? Um, my middle force is a five. Twenty-six. I kind of feel like this, um, your team really will be, if there are any lessons left about organization, some of the sober things in life mm -hmm. that will help you, to master them so that you can go out and be the 26th, really master and contribute. This is the year to get them and to master them and put it into form. I agree. Did you want to say your first thing you might be doing? Just starting to learn. Really? Mm-hmm. Make some points. Yeah. 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 Well, despite the song really before being sober, I see a lot of um, activity this year. A lot of people coming in to the picture and you coming, to respecting yourself more and being respected by others as you stand up for your own knowledge and accomplishment and put it into four. But I don't think the year's going to be dull. <laughs> That's just the underlying lesson. Mm -hmm. I think the... I, I don't think it's really the dullness that uh, scares me, but um, the whole, you know, the whole idea of actually paying the tax on April 1st. Right. You know, doing all the tasks. <laughs> The more you can do those sensitive functions, the more it probably ends up in when we neglect our, quote, inferior function, the thing that doesn't come to us as readily. If we'll try to work it a little bit and then lock the whole well of energy that we can use. And if you think of the numbers, if you thought of a, 
up the thong. It has a, I'm not a musician, but it has a regular, a symphony, and there is a tune, a melody that is basic. That's the lifetime melody. But every once in a while, there's a digression. You know, there's an alter, an, a supplement of other poems and sounds, and your destiny goes on. Your birth force continues, but these other themes help us to actualize the whole. Were there any final questions or comments? Is, is the time to open up discussion yes. and talk about your numbers, mm -hmm. your forecasts? You probably will we'll always have a push pull between this wanting to be unusual and do you know fun things and also getting you know down and doing what you you know the, the concrete type of life. The four and the five will always cause a little bit of push pull and over there. Mm -hmm. But the more you accept that thing to your energy, I think things will start coming together. Something that you can go home and work with with people in your life. You can work with the, now the months that you're in. Does everybody know what month they would be in? Just take the year and add one. January's a one. You look at each month through the year, break it down to a single digit. So January's a one, and December's a three, because one and two are three. Then add that to your personal year. So what kind of month are we all in? What's your month? You can just do that by adding a one to the, per to the personal year that you're in now. Year, year two. So even though this is a year of leadership and innovation and self-expression, it has kind of a partnership sub-emphasis. If there is a partnership month, this is one of them for you within this this year. Do you see how, how that kind of works? What's your personal month? Uh, eight. You're in a... Uh, uh, that's my first. What is this year for you? Your personal year this year. An 11, right? Yeah, 11. Okay, so add one to that. That's 12. One and two is three. So you're... What is your month and day? Let me make sure you're doing it right. Your month and day of birth is... August 10th. August 10th, so that's nine. And you added two. two. So that's a, um, you're one. right. So this is a 12, um, three. So within this... You're emphasizing partnership and high spiritual development. This is a very creative one for you. You have a sub-element of three. So you can even look at the month with adding and enhancing the picture. What's your month? No, um, four. The month is? Yeah. So your personal year is a three. Right. And it's a four. So this is within this very creative year that's going to take you out and about with many varied experiences and creativity. The four helps you really ground. Pay attention to details at work and build a solid foundation this month. How about you? Um, one. One. So you're in a not... This year was a, a nine. It's a nine. So this yeah. is within this year of all the lessons of nine. This is a, a new beginning within the year for you. Uh, and more self-expression. Emphasis, leadership, like starting new things. How about you? Exactly. Oh well, yeah, two same thing. Okay. Ditto. <laughs> what, what's your personal? The personal year for you is a seven. seven. You just have January. Eight. Eight. Okay, so anything having to do with the monetary success, starting pioneering new classes, you know, that everything you touch financially now. It, uh, it's a good time for goal setting, manifesting these, these goals and wishes. We've got that magic touch this morning. And Sharon, what would your month be? A one. A one. <laughs> New beginnings within a nine year, also for you. And how about you? And a four. Four. So this is a, within a three year, this, could, this might be no, a little bit nose to the grindstone, organizing, getting ready for things to come, uh, conserving and, and uh, learning some of the lessons of four within a year. What's your? A two months within a one year. Mm -hmm. Can you put it together yourself? So that would be like, what would you say? Well, since my book is mutual agreement. Okay. We got the this. Perfect. Well, you're the yeah. perfect example of numerology. <laughs> <laughs> it's our <all> okay. <laughs> and, and you'd be the same as Linda's doing it. You can start putting it together with your own intuition. The value of this really isn't anyone else telling you or a book telling you, but gain the information and then start using your intuition. See how it kind of clicks for you, for yourself and others. How about you, Julia? What's um, your month? And a five. A five. Mm -hmm. You like five. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what. So what would you say that means in a four-year time, a five-month? Uh, 
Okay, great. All right, let's, let's do a final thing. If you're all going to be so good. Tomorrow is going to be what day for this? It was great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tomorrow is the 9th of January, so you add, uh, um, now you have to take your personal yeah. month. We all start with your personal month, and now we'll add tomorrow to it, the 9th. Yeah, I mean, the 9th of January. Okay, let's, let's take, um, let's take Julia. She, she just said she's, she's in a four year, right? But she's having a five month. Tomorrow is the ninth, so add nine and five together, and it's, she's having a five day. to <laughs> be one of the days she really enjoys. So you start with your personal month and add not the ninth of January. That's how you get what personal day it'll be. So as our final thing, we're going to go around and you tell us what that means. I'm using your intuition with it. Okay. What? <laughs> okay. What was? What was your? What's your personal year? My, my my years in life. <laughs> okay, and, and what's your personal month? <laughs> is a two because you had January. It's a two. Tomorrow is the ninth day, so your personal month is a two. So you add that nine to two is what? Eleven. So tomorrow is the day of potential spiritual spiritual mastery, special partnership. Okay. Can everyone see how to do it? And what do you think that means? <laughs> So the last number we did, which is what? What well, was it? Three. Right. Was it this year's uh, yeah. seven <laughs> elementary? Mm -hmm. You know, January is a three month for you because you took oh, one of January and added it to your 11th personal year. Yeah. You, to get your personal month, you just add the calendar month to, to the personal year. So February, mm -hmm. you'd add the two to 11. If you want to know your day, that you just add the day to all of that. Does ever we can do it, or if, is that you don't have to go that far? We'll just go around for those who want to. Who would like to share a personal day? Okay. Um, tomorrow I'll be at Alexi, and yeah. that's a foundation day because it's like only my second get together in person. Okay. And um, third. Uh, Thursday, I'll be at Dottie's class, which you know I've done for years. All right. That's like a, a five active. And um, six, I'll probably be seeing you again. That's okay. an eternal um, soulmate, which is a home family or stuff like that. And seven is uh, Saturday, which is mysteries and soul and body and stuff. And I'll be taking uh, uh, Chi Kung. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it during your three years. Get out and do it all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good teachers are saying. Okay. Great creative. Suzanne, do you know what day you're in? One. I'm back to one day. New beginning tomorrow. One. Really think about what seeds you're planting tomorrow. Okay. How about you? One again. One, and you're one too. Yeah. <laughs> you once ought to get together and do something new. <laughs> Joan, what's your I'm day? Back. I'm back. I'm at eight again. Eight. Well, with all these new classes starting again, this is all the, and, and any goals in your personal life, financial goals, things you wanted to do for yourself, get out and do it. It's going to work for you financially for whoever's success. Okay. Well, it's the four day and four months. I have a lot of work. Okay. Yeah. How about you? Eleven. Eleven. And tell us what that means intuitively. Well, I think it's part. It's a kind of partnership raised to a higher level. Mm -hmm. the way yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I just looked it up. I and sometime in the past I had, um, added up all the names of my birth, uh -huh. the letters of my birth name. Mm -hmm. What is that called? So I call it the destiny. Uh -huh. Destiny. I'm on the eleven. Oh, mm -hmm. That's important. Seven and, and the eleven. Important day. Yeah, the, the mystical number and the highly you, charged spiritual number. Him? Perfect for dreams. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll go over with you. Okay, okay Julia? Five. So, the five day. Okay, just one last time. For Anne and anybody else, just how you do it is you take your, um, you know you you know how to get your personal year. Right? Yeah, I got my personal year. year. Okay, in order to get the month, you take whatever the calendar of month is, if it's the first month, second month, and you just add that number to the year. 
Oh. So to get March, what would you do? If you're in an 11? Add three. Three and you to get... my nine. Because that was my original year. Okay, I see the confusion. All right, the nine is what you were born under. Right. That's your lifelong vibration. Right. Okay. Oh, birth four. Birth four. Birth four. All right. When we got this year for you, we took just your month and day. So put the nine aside. That's your overall vibration, but we're okay. not adding to the nine. My personal year this year was an 11. How did we get the 11? We got it by taking your month and your day okay. only and adding them to 1991. Right. That's how we got the 11. So the nine we got by using your year. Put the nine aside. Don't add to nine. No. Add to the 11. Okay. And add the calendar month to the 11. So March would be 3 plus 11 is 14, would be a 5 oh, month period. Okay. That's how you do it. And then you add each day to, to oh, that to get to okay. there. And I suppose there's some people who do the hour, but I've never <laughs> done it. <laughs> but if you have something to find, you know, or you choice to make, it's kind of fun. These are all keys for your intuition to work. They're not locked in cement. You can pick up books like Ginger Jordan's Romance in Your Name. Play with it. We're going to talk in this class about finding your own ESP tool in the ESP in workshops. Not everyone relates to numerology. That may not, I mean, it's not all of our thing. Some of us may find that we have a talent, we relate to astrology or psychometry or dream work or work with color in the aura. Uh, that we're very empathetic, that, that the healing attracts us. And that's what we're going to be working with. Next time we're going to do a, we're having an eclipse. Um, and it's a, I believe, new moon clip. We're going to do a, something called a moon circle, which is like an American Indian medicine wheel. And some of you participated this last time. We create a sacred space together, and we really get into developing that, our intuition. So we're going to work a lot with that and doing uh, psychic readings in that format next time. So that helping you learn to do it as well as continuing the process for you. The week after, January 22nd, we're going to be working on the secrets of your dreams. And for those of you that plan to come that night, if you can start logging your dreams <coughs> and putting the date of your dream, and then uh, for people who are just work, beginning to work with dreams, I suggest writing the dream down in, it, in your notebook. Well, all of us should write it down. And leave an extra line for interpretation between the lines of your dream. Don't alter anything that you get. Try to, uh, if you have trouble remembering your dream, Try not to jump up right away when you get up, or even move the, the side on which you're sleeping, and stay until you can recall something. And then later on through the day, if you begin to get ready for a dream workshop, begin to underline key and significant words. Some people say, uh, to nouns and adjectives. Mary was driving a red car up a steep road. Mary, red car. And begin to simply associate, what does this mean to me? What comes up for me? And we have a, a wonderful dream expert and <laughs> worked a lot with dreams. So we should have a lot of fun. Begin to make a dream notebook, especially at the beginning of the year. You may be prophesying in your dreams events yet to come through the coming year or years. And I found it's really important to date dreams with a year. Because if you look back, many dreams are prophetic, as well as having personal and emblematic dreams. Okay, so we have a lot of exciting topics, and any final questions, comments, things that you'd like to explore in class? What do you do? I mean, I, when I go to sleep, I don't really dream that I just wake up the way I'm sleeping. I don't wake up <coughs> like I'm coming out of sleep. It's very strange. <laughs> How do you How do wake, wake up? up? <laughs> I wake up come just alert. I it's just like I'm looking from one side of the room to the other. And you're Occa occasionally I'll have a dream and it'll be something it'll be a synthesis of a bunch of bad experiences all together. But that's it. Yeah. You were mentioning at the break that you had a little difficulty coming back from meditation and that in groups you can go to a very deep level. Mm -hmm. That, that must tie in to this next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you, if you think you don't dream, you're probably mistaken because it's been proven in sleep laboratories that we are all having rapid eye movement dream yeah. period. What, you're not recalling, really you're not connected. And there could be a lot of explanations for that. That are, um, are you sleeping enough? I know you have a younger child. I don't have a younger child. You're yeah. not? No, I'm, yeah, I'm sleeping. Yeah, I thought them. Um, so you're sleeping 
fully. You have enough time you don't get up suddenly for work or other activities. What do you do just before you go to school? Oh, usually card reading. <laughs> <laughs> something. Or I read something. Yes. Do you eat anything? Or no. Yeah. This has been going on for about four years. Could I have the purple first, please? You don't have to answer. Have you had a good girl here? You're really probably huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're okay, you're okay, you feel me. Well, I saw one on the board in the a woman cycle uh -huh. for women, uh -huh. and they dream more during uh -huh. the hormonal activity. So if the ovaries have been removed and the uh -huh. hormone isn't being replaced, uh -huh. then the dream is more decreased. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. so, so, do you feel like you're, you're spending time out of, you're having out of the body experiences? I've had a lot of very strange experiences. I've had things that feel in the Everything's been very odd for four years. I don't know. So anyway, my question is, what, what can you do? What can I, I, maybe I'll, maybe for this class, <coughs> I'll find a way to remember. What happened four years ago? You said it for the last four years, things have been strange. I did some other things for me. Four years ago? Well, I think all through my life, but most notably. I had a period of time where my um, sleep patterns were very strange, and I look back at that time now, I think I was going through a kind of spiritual initiation and opening another level, and it wasn't all pleasant, you know? I mean, and sometimes I'd wake up and see things floating in the room, like, can you relate to that too, Linda? And I, half of the time I was quite unnerved by it, but I look back at it now, partly a high stress period, but also I think I was being, going through a, an inner, an initiation process on the inner plane. There could be many explanations for this. Um, if you, if you, well, in general, if you want a dream, if you affirm or pray or ask for a dream, I have a friend who's a Canadian dream expert who had just stirring once the Sleeping Prophet on her radio program in Canada. But that's another story. But she, when I was um, with her in graduate school at Virginia Beach and typing late at night in her house, when she went to sleep, she would put pin a note on her pillow and about, I didn't read it specifically, you may know about that method, Linda, but she would ask her a dream about what job she should take and she would want the dream within three days and she would simply pin the note to her pillow and go to sleep and she had it. But I think the wanting to and setting her mind has a lot to do with it and then not moving her position, trying to, to linger in the in-between a little bit and pull back whatever we can, write it down and begin to free associate, just whatever okay. intuitively comes up for you emotionally with that symbol, we'll begin to build a bridge again. But I no doubt there are other things going on other than this. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll uh, come to understand them. One way. thing that's successful for me is when I, I go to big dream conferences and I don't dream. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. But what I do is before I go to sleep is I'll make up a dream. I'll say, what I really would like to dream about tonight is X, mm -hmm. Y, Z. And so I you know, create a fantasy. Because what you're doing is you're nursing, you're feeding into your subconscious and say, well, mm -hmm. you know, maybe my past experiences with nightmares and mundane dreams and bizarro kinds of things, maybe I don't really kind of you know, want that. Well, you get some good, you know, nursing. Mm -hmm. And the more you work with your dreams, the richer they become during the time that you're actively working. It's sort of like you build a bridge. Your, your higher self, your super conscious self, <laughs> the center of it. The, the wheel is always trying to communicate with you and send that energy. You know, but sometimes if you don't open the open the channel, then it it you know it's always available. Knock and the door shall be open. It's the matter sometimes of making the attention. When people are first awakening to their sensitivity, you know, one of the things that used to paralyze me is I would have I I was didn't have a lot of money, so I shopped at. Uh, like Goodwill and I had clothes that other people had worn mm -hmm. and at, and I would literally I would wake up and think there was somebody else in the room and I would feel uh, that it was really coming from the clothes. Good point, Mark. There's all kinds of things. Have you ever seen an owl in your room? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not what they appear to be. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to tell you there's, huh, uh, that's something that I saw once. I broke a, uh, I tried to shoe it off a lamp and I broke this large lamp. Hmm. But of course, that all was only there as a spiritual form. Oh, 
was a long time. Dreams reflect the complex levels of writing, and, and they certainly are, are a magic journey. So we look forward to doing that. Uh, if coming next week, we're comfortable close, and uh, we may be sitting on the floor and chairs if you wish. And if you have something that's sort of special or sacred to you, it could be a crystal, a feather, something that you would like to place in a circle to create a sacred space and to do some transformative work, please feel free to bring it. So thank you all for coming. <laughs>